Alright, hey guys, my name is Shadow, and welcome to the 2.2 Guardians beta for Elite Dangerous. Now today, what we're going to be doing is just taking a look at some of the changes inside of space stations. So things like the starport services menu, stuff in the outfitting screen, that sort of thing. So let's start here, well, with the general starport services menu interface. So as you guys can see, this is kind of well, more or less completely rearranged. So first of all, we now have stuff to do with our ships over here on the right. So we have outfitting, shipyard, and advanced maintenance, which is stuff like repair, restock, refuel over here on the right. And we also have a dedicated button for livery right now, but this is also still in the outfitting screen if you want to do it that way. So that's pretty cool. I like that this is all separated now. Now a new feature that we have here in the shipyard is something called ship transfer. Now I know a lot of people have been wondering about this feature and, and what it's going to be like when it's implemented in the game. Now my opinion is that this is kind of a poor implementation. I don't think that I will ever use this the way that it's set up right now. But let me explain what it does if you don't already know, which I'm sure you guys probably know what this is for. But anyways, so let's say that I'm at a space station really far away. I took a ship that could jump really far, but it doesn't really have any combat capability. But I need my combat ship for some reason, but it's, I don't know, two or three hundred light years away, and it's really inconvenient to go get it. Well, now there's this feature called ship transfer. So basically what it does is you select a ship that's at another space station, and it can, it's, it's kind of like it's delivered to you. Now here, it's telling us how long it's going to take to get this ship. Now this is problem number one that I have with this, is it takes time, based on how far away you are, to get this ship. I feel that this should be instantaneous, or this is useless, because I would personally use this feature if I wanted to go play with my friends who are really far away, and I wanted to get to them quickly, but then have my combat ship. For giving this a period of time, like like 34 minutes, if I'm like 200 light years away, that's ridiculous. So the, the next thing is it costs money to do this. Now, I'm not saying this should be free, but I am saying it should cost significantly less than this. So this is partly based on the distance that your ship is from you, and it's partly based on the value of whatever ship you're trying to transfer. So as you can see here, if I wanted to get my Python here, it would not only take 34 minutes, but I would also have to pay 13 million credits and change. That's that's right, 13 million credits and change to get that ship in 34 minutes. That's insane. So Frontier, poor implementation there. I will probably never use that feature. You may as well not have wasted your time putting that in. So moving on to cooler things, we now also have new ships in this game. So I actually purchased one here. So well, new ship, I shouldn't say ships, plural. It's only one ship as far as I know. We have a new ship and that is the Beluga Liner. So this is just a passenger ship. Basically, that's pretty much all it is because most of the emphasis in 2.2 is on passenger missions and stuff. So we now have two dedicated passenger ships in this game. There's there's the Orca, which has been in the game forever, but has just been kind of a bump on a log since nobody's been using it. And now we have the Beluga Liner, which is really big. So that's some of the new ship stuff that we have. Some of the other new stuff is over here on this menu side. Now we still have stuff like the commodities market, the mission board, but as you can see, there are a couple new things. One of those is the passenger lounge. The other one of those is the crew lounge. Let's take a look at the passenger lounge first. Now the passenger lounge is very much like the mission board, but the difference is the missions you will get in the passenger lounge are, well, just like the name implies, are all passenger missions. So if you want to do any of these missions, you will need a module on your ship called a passenger cabin, and we'll get to those in just a minute. Now, there are different kinds of passenger missions that we can do, and these different kind of missions really depend on what kind of passenger cabins you have. So we have like luxury cabins and first class cabins and stuff like that. And we'll talk about those more in a minute. But yeah, so basically these kind of missions are like cargo runs, except your 
cargo bitches at you occasionally. So yeah, this doesn't interest me that much. I will probably never do a passenger mission once the actual uh, patch releases, but yeah, so there's that. Now let's take a look at the crew lounge. Now this, this kind of interests me a little bit. Now this is where you can hire pilots for your ship. Now over here, we can see a list of ships that support the fighter capability. Now the fighters, are a module that you have to put in your ship just like the vehicle hangar is a module that you can put in your ship. And right here is a list of all the ships that will actually support a fighter hangar. So right here it says that the Beluga liner supports fighter hangars and maybe it does. However, I've been trying to put a fighter hangar in my Beluga liner for like a couple of hours and it's just not working. So maybe that's a bug in this particular build of the patch, or maybe it's just a bug that, that only I'm having, because I've actually seen videos of other people using the fighter hanger on the Beluga liner. However, when I go into outfitting to select a fighter hanger for my Beluga liner, it's just not there. So maybe that's a bug. I don't know, whatever. But this would really interest me more if the fighters could be used on, well, any ship that could support a, a module of the correct size, because I am not a huge ship pilot myself. I, I purchased an Anaconda one time, and then I turned around and sold it because it was just too big. And really, the Anaconda I found was too powerful, and it made the game not fun for me. So I don't really like to fly anything larger than the Python, personally, but that's, that's just personal feelings. So let's actually just look at what we can do in here. So down here are a list of pilots that we can hire for different amounts of money. So we have different ranked pilots from harmless to expert. And this amount of money that you see right here is how much you will actually have to pay to hire that particular pilot. Now this is a one-time fee. And then after you pay that initial fee and you get a pilot hired up here, you can set them as active. I, I can't do it right now because I don't have a fighter hangar installed on this particular ship. But if you did, you could set them as active. And then what would happen is this number right here, 12%, is how much of your total profits this pilot is going to take from you for their services. That's right. You have to not only do you have to pay one time to hire this pilot initially, but then they will continue taking money from you thereafter every time you make money basically so there's that i'm not sure why npcs need money but they get it so there's that so we have those new things here on the starport services menu so let's take a look in the outfitting screen and see what kind of new things we have we do have a couple of new modules so let's just look in here and see what there is so one thing we were just talking about are the fighter hangers. Now there are different size fighter hangers. So we have here the 6D and the 5D. So let's go ahead and add a fighter hanger to this ship and we'll see some of the options for this. Now there are different kinds of fighters available too. So for one, we have the Imperial fighter and each of these fighters are available in several different configurations. Some of them with fixed weapons, some of them with gimbaled weapons, and you can get them with pulse lasers, plasma or plasma accelerators, beam lasers, whatnot. And yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So then we also have the F-63 Condor and we have something new called the Taipan. And basically, yeah, each one of these are available in different configurations, but it seems that you can only use one fighter at a time per any ship that you're using. Now, if I'm wrong about that, you guys can let me know in the comments. But from what I've experienced so far, even if I put more than one fighter bay on my ship, I can only have one active pilot at a time. So that seems pointless. Now, a cool thing that you can do, however, is if you have a ship that's capable of supporting a fighter bay, you can have your pilot that you've hired either fly the fighter or you can fly the fighter and that pilot you, that you've hired can fly your big expensive ship and potentially get it destroyed. So that's really cool. Now we have some other different kinds of internal compartments here that are that are new that we also need to do some of the functionality with this. And those are passenger cabins. Now we have 
several different kinds of passenger cabins and even one that's not showing up here. So we have the first class, the business class, the economy class, and then there's another uh, kind of cabin called the luxury class cabin. And I thought I clicked on a class six spot, but maybe I didn't. So let's, let's go over here and my phone's going off. And yes, I have an elite dangerous ringtone. So let's, let's check in the class six. Ah, here we go. Okay. So, okay. No, I'm still not seeing the, the luxury class in here, but there is another kind of passenger cabin called the luxury class cabin. Now, depending on what kind of missions you want to do, you will need particular kinds of passenger cabins to accomplish those missions. So yeah, there's that. So that's cool. That's some of the new stuff that we can get. Now, if we go back here and we look in livery, and I think this was already here, but I've just noticed it. So we have on on pretty much every ship, we have new slots for like body kit type stuff. And then there's something down here called weapon color modifier. Now, if I click in here, there's nothing here that I can do. So I can only assume that this is going to be something that we're going to have to pay money for. I don't know that I particularly want to pay money for my weapons just to be different colors. That seems pointless. I mean, I, I get paying money for the skins. I mean, as you guys can see, I've purchased several skin packs. I mean, I, I like skins myself. I'm a fan of cosmetic items. However, just making my, like making my lasers different colors or something that I'm probably not gonna do that. So whatever. But that is most of the new stuff that we have here in Starport Services. Now, there are other changes uh, in 2.2 that we will get to in other videos, but that's pretty much all we're going to be talking about today. So let me know if there was anything else in the space stations that we didn't talk about that you guys particularly want to know about. And let me know that down in the comments. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video, guys. So let me know what you thought down in the comments. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. And that's it for me. So thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one.